Hello everybody and welcome to the first video cast edition of the Daily Dose. I'm your host Crazy Kaylee and let's get to it without further ado. Our deck today is as ever our Bolas Grixis control deck which just kills things forever until it gets 8 mana out for Bolas. We've also got a couple of alternate win conditions in Staff of Nin and Nephalia Drown Yard. And uh, the, really the MVP so far of this deck has been Mystic Retrieval, uh, which basically is really good card advantage to get us back to of almost anything we need in the late game. Get back counter spells, kill spells, or whatever really we want at that particular moment. Can even get back a Think Twice for extra card advantage. Uh, it doesn't, of course, have the speed or the body of, uh, say, a Snapcaster Mage, but it's just superior card advantage, and it's really good against control decks, although it suffers against aggro, of course. Let's go ahead and try to find a game here. So Eloise Zilla will be our hopeful victim. She is on the play though, so let's see what she does. She keeps, and what we're going to keep it as well. We have Dreadbore, we can get to Barter and Blood pretty quickly, and uh, Gilded Lotus is always a good card to have at the very start of game one. Island, so that's pretty interesting. Uh, we can tell from this already that uh, that Elaine is a, or Eloise really, is a really a good player, uh, starting with the OP Island turn one. Mountain is very interesting. Uh, this could be a Delver deck. Delver decks do tend to have uh, blue-red. We might actually be looking at the very rare mirror match here. I have to say I'm intrigued. I'm curious as to what's going to happen next to me here. Oh, gutter snipe. So yep, this will be uh, this will be an instance in sorceries deck. She's gonna she's gonna power through with a bunch of damage spells on us. I'm not going to play Dreadboar just yet because I want to get Sulphur Falls out in case we draw more weird tap land. So we'll cast Dreadboar next turn. She might be able to do a bunch of damage to us, but I kind of want to wait and see here. All right, so we just drew Liliana, which is pretty interesting, but now we definitely do have to go ahead and start killing things. Um, I could Dreadbore both of them, but that's the stupid play because I do have a Barter and Blood in hand. And this deck might have a Planeswalker in it. I don't know. I'm not really familiar with this kind of instant and sorcery build. Uh, I do see it from time to time. I don't know if it has an official name or anything, but... Uh, yeah, I don't know enough about this deck uh, to know if I should uh, be saving my Dreadboards, but in any case, Barter and Blood is the best play for card advantage reasons anyway. Another Gutter Snipe. Alright, so one thing I'm pretty confident this guy is going to hate is, uh, is dropping cards. So I think what I'm going to do is uh, cast Liliana here. And the reason he's going to be annoyed at this, hopefully, is I'll make him sack his gutter snipe first off, and then he'll be facing the prospect of sacking a bunch of, or not sacking, discarding a bunch of cards for the rest of the game, which if he has, you know, a ton of instants and sorceries, he's going to hate. Uh, so hopefully here, uh, what I predict will happen is that he'll use a burn spell on Liliana, and that'll be, just be really good for me, yeah. Hopefully he'll re redirect this to Liliana. Yeah, exactly. So that's basically exactly what we were hoping would happen there. He burns a kill sp or a burn spell on Leon instead of us, and uh, we've basically two for one because we got a gutter snipe and the pillar of flame out of the way in exchange for that. Uh, so here we have yet another gutter snipe. I think the play here is to get our mana going because we're not drawing any lands to cast our gilded lotus. So I want to get this chromatic lantern out, and then we can use the dread bore on the gutter snipe and still have one in reserve in the kind of off chance that he has a Planeswalker. I don't think he does, really, but you never know. All right, so nothing from him. Hopefully we've completely run him out of cards that he can cast at this point. Uh, we'll play the Water Grave tapped here, get the Gilded Lotus out, and basically just wait for Bolas at this point and kill everything that he does. All right, he's going to negate our Lotus, but we that's thats fine with us, really. We don't have Bolas in hand anyway. And that is just one less counterspell to deal with. Oh, although we did draw it this turn. But still, not a big deal. We've got, uh, we've got a ton of answers, so we can just sit here. Really would be preferring to drawing land than to a Barter and Blood at this point, but that's, that's totally okay, because he's not doing anything. All right, so now we're one away. All right, he's going to draw some cards here, though, so he'll probably have something to do this turn, I would imagine. 
Nope. All right. So what that definitely means, uh, at least what it probably means in my eyes, that he's just sitting on counter spells. Uh, so this is problematic for us because we don't have any counter spells of our own to power through Bolas. Uh, we couldn't cast them if we did right now because uh, we only have the eight mana four Bolas. I think the thing to do here is probably just sit. I could try to bait the counter spell with Mystic Retrieval by casting on Barter and Blood or something, but he doesn't have any creatures, so he's probably not going to counter it. Uh, I'd rather just like try to draw some more land and hopefully uh, a counterflux so that I can kind of back up Bolas with a counterflux. So he thinks twice again. He's going to hit us with a Searing Spear. That's all right. Still got plenty of life. I'm really curious as to what he has in hand. I wish I had. Uh, I wish I was still mainboarding Slaughter games at this point because. For situations like this, it's just invaluable because you can't counter it and you can just look through everything they have and know exactly what the right play is. We probably can't afford to sit for too long because he almost certainly has a ton of burn spells. This is actually really good for us because it'll put him on the clock and he'll have to start casting out because we're going to mill him out before he burns us to death. All right, so we'll just start the mill train rolling here. And hopefully this will give us kind of a better idea of what might be in his hand. All right, so Stromkirk, no, that's actually kind of interesting. So this is kind of a aggro instance in Sorcery's deck. Syncopate, of course. All right, so we draw our own Think Twice. That's pretty good. But really we want land and counter spells at this point. So let's hope we draw some with this Think Twice. He might be thinking about countering that. Okay. He might just be bluffing the counter spell, but probably not with just six cards in hand and not casting anything. All right, so we drew a counter flux. That's really good. All right, so let's do some math. He's shown us that he has syncopate. Uh, he definitely has negate. Um, if he has a negate or two, then, then he's in great shape anyway. Uh, I think what to do here is actually try to cast Bolas, because we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and then enough for a counterflux. Uh, if he tries to syncopate it, then he'll have to syncopate for 4, so that's uh, that's 4 out of his 4 money. I need enough for, enough for a negate anyway, and I really, really don't want to just wait here forever, because I am starting to get kind of lean on life, so we'll go ahead and cast Bolas and see what he does. I doubt that this is going to go through even with my counterflux, but I've got to start burning through these counter spells at least a little bit. Yeah, it looks like he is going to cast Syncopate here. Although 5 mana is a bit, a bit excessive, I think, isn't it? He's going to syncopate for five, which is really bizarre, because I only have three mana open. Uh, so we'll counterflux it, and uh, he may have a negate, um, but it's still kind of unnecessary to syncopate for five. All right, so it resolved. Does he have the negate? Oh, he does not. See, now now he's really going to regret negating that Gilded Lotus. If he hadn't done that, then uh, you know he would still have a negate in hand. But uh, now he doesn't, and sad times for him. Yeah, this is the post bolus thing. Every opponent does this when you cast bolus and they don't really have an answer to it. They just kind of sit there and don't do anything. Yep, there we go. Finally passing turn. And we'll just keep blowing stuff up and next turn is death. Uh, we are going to spend this turn getting that counterflux back because that's, uh, that's a pretty important thing to have right now. So we're sitting pretty here. We've got Bolas standing on 11, we've got a counterflux in hand, and there's not a whole lot I can imagine the enemy deck could do right, right now. Yeah, Pillar of Flame, we'll see if he redirects to Bolas. Nope, he's going to cast it to our face. 
That's all right, though. We're still at 10. Okay. I uh, don't really get it, but uh, sure. Cast electricry all you want, man. Level 9 authorization required. Command codes verified. All right, so we've got electricery in his hand. She's gonna. I, I, one of the things you really need to do is if you get hit with Bolus's ultimate and you don't have a plausible way of coming back from it, which I doubt that this opponent does, just concede the game. I mean, I'm really gonna. I'm, I'm gonna get to see a lot of your hand here. So we got two copies of Madcap skills. We got electricery. We got Essence Scatter, which is hopefully gonna be bordered out if she knows what she's doing. Uh, electricery and uh, Goblin Electromancer. So not a lot, whole lot we didn't already know about. Although Madcap skills is kind of an interesting choice. All right, so apparently we're going to have to play it out here. And uh, we'll just start milling. Because milling lets us see more of the deck. Yeah, another Pellar Flame. All right, so nothing, nothing terribly new or interesting here. We'll go ahead and load Bolus up on our own lands here, because we don't need them at this point. Island for Delver, fine with me. We'll go ahead and devour flesh that. Okay, finally the concession. All right, so sideboarding against this deck is going to be kind of an interesting idea here. We're going to need dissipates because counter spells are going to be really important uh, to burn through their counter spells. Uh, we don't need really excessive amounts of kill uh, against this deck, so I'm considering boarding out some of the kill for it. Uh, we don't really need slaughter games in this in the, against this kind of deck because it's all so fast. By the time we slaughter game something, it's really not going to matter. Really, its main value would be in keeping us from being burned to death by removing a bunch of burn spells, but that's not really worthwhile by itself. I think the thing to do here... Ah, oh God, I'm trying to decide what, uh, what kill spells I want to board out here. Uh, I think I'm going to go with Dreadbore and, uh, and Murder and then just sit on the rest of them. Yeah, this deck really wants to kill us by, like, casting a Searing Spear with, like, two copies of Gutter Snipe out. And we really don't need to have, like, the really, really, really excessive amounts of kill that this deck is capable of against, like, Naya Humans or something like that. So we can afford to board out a couple of kill spells. Kind of interesting to see what will come out of the sideboard uh, from Elwaz. She probably put out a few counter spells, I would imagine, uh, and hopefully board out the Essence Scatter. All right, so she's on the play this time, and this is a pretty playable hand. Um, we got Dreadbore for that early uh, gutter sniper, whatever, so that's good news. And I remember we saw a Stromkirk Noble as, as well, so it's good to have a, a quick response for that guy because he can get out of hand pretty quick. Uh, we can go ahead and afford to play Watery Grave here because there's nothing for us to Dreadbore. Drawing Mystic Retrieval, really good. What we really want to see is a Counterspell. All right, hit us with Pillar of Flame, sure. All right, and we're, we're well on our way here. She missed a land drop that last turn, which is really good news for us. Yeah, you can Pillar of Flame all you want. All right, so Socratic Lantern is out. Gilded Lotus next turn, unless we have to do something else, and we're sitting pretty. There's the gutter snipe. All right, so the question now is, do we want to cast Gilded Lotus or do we want to cast Dreadbore? Uh, I think I want to cast Dreadbore. Because Dreadbore also lets us have Dissipate Mana open. And I really don't want to get hit with like a million damage because I know that the, the gutter snipe decks can do that. All right, so that's another gutter snipe. Um, hmm. I could... I could dissipate it, but I could also just sit and like burn a barter and blood on it, which I think is what I prefer to do. I'd rather have the dissipates for the late game when I need it to um, cast bowls and back it up with the dissipate or something. All right, so this makes my job actually a lot easier drawing that land because now I can just cast Gilded Lotus and then and then cast uh, barter and blood. 
So that's what we'll do. We've got a Mystic Retrieval still in hand. So we can deal with just about anything that, uh, that she can throw at us at this point. So we're not too concerned about the inefficiency of killing one creature with a Barter and Blood. All right, Searing Spear. So yeah, I'm burning through a lot, of, a lot of burn spells here. So not too concerned about it. Uh, okay, so yeah, looks like bolus time. Oh, one extra mana. That's okay, though. I don't think it's a game-losing mistake. Yeah, this is the bolus pause once again. Very characteristic. Every time you cast Bolas and your opponent has no answers, they got to think about it for at least, you know, 10 seconds or so. All right, so this is pretty much a guaranteed victory at this point. Um, not really sure what she can do. I mean, she can bring down Bolas with a few burn spells, but she's run through so many already. And even if she did, I'd just pump it back up again. So this, this is game over. Yeah, I don't even need to. Okay, so there's the concession. Uh, and that's the game. Uh, not really a lot coming out of this other deck. It's kind of a weak matchup uh, for, for the enemy deck because I can just kill all the relevant creatures and you can't burn someone to death with just, you know, however many copies of Pillar of Flame and Searing Spear. So really all I have to do is kill the gutter snipes and whatnot, and uh, I'm totally fine. Uh, did keep me a little bit on my toes in the, in the first game, but just really that was more because I wasn't quite drawing what I needed, and she had more counter spells than, uh, than burn spells, and that was really helping her out. Uh, this one, she got off to kind of a slow mana start. She probably kept a two-land hand and then got really unlucky drawing land. Uh, and, you know, it, even if she had counter spells, there's not a lot she could do about it because she was just burning, burning, burning every turn. And I got really lucky and went, you know, Chromatic Lantern to Gilded Lotus, and I got out a really early bolus. So... Really good hand for me, a uh, really good game for me, game two, and just, you know, a, 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 kind of, a kind of bad matchup for the enemy deck is really what that's all about. Uh, that's basically the end of my show for today. Uh, if you enjoyed hearing this, uh, let me know in the comments below. Uh, if you'd prefer to, you know, have the text version uh, to the video version because you don't like the dulcet sounds of my voice, uh, let me know that too. And in any case, thank Diego who paid for the microphone. Uh, that's it for me for today, and I will see you guys next time.